Hello, hello, this is my quick guide on how to properly season your carbon steel wok. Hi mom. First, wash your wok thoroughly. The manufacturer applies a coating of oil to keep it from rusting during transit and storage. I mean really, scrub it the best that you can. If any of this oil is left over when you try to season it, you'll need to start over and use a steel wool to get the pan back down to its original form. I used Dawn dish soap and a blue sponge with a scrubby on the back. I washed it about three times, taking about 10 total minutes. You should be able to run a white paper towel across the pan, leaving no residue. You can also feel it. Here's a before and after picture for you to compare the seasoning process to. Here's a comparison to my old wok, which I have been using for a couple of years. This is important, you need to use a powerful flame. The oven is not hot enough. You can use a gas stove if you want, but you will need to modify it a bit to get the heat needed. My first wok, I used this dinky little Korean store model to season the wok, and it worked out just fine. I just upgraded to this fancy Iwatani model, and it puts out so much more heat and made this process easier. Plug in your gas to your burner and crank that puppy to full blast. Set your wok on top of the burner and leave it there. If you start to see a color change, you know it's working. It should be blue to bluish black in color. Let's call this process bluing the steel and it will start to form right around where the flame touches the wok. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in here so you can see the color change a little bit better. I chose to keep my handle on while doing this. You can take yours off. Remember, I'm lazy, and as long as you're careful, the handle will be just fine. You will see a bit of smoke coming from the handle touching the pan, and that's okay. There's that bluish black color forming. The trick is to hold a part of the pan that needs this bluing to happen right over the flame. I ended up using pliers to hold the pan handle and slowly moving the pan around. This part took about 15 to 20 minutes. So to save you some time, here are some time-lapse photos so you can see the process. Once the pan is done, let it cool while you grab your grapeseed oil and some paper towels. Go ahead and crank that burner back up to full and get your pan warming. I let mine warm up for about one to two minutes and it should feel pretty hot at this point. Pour in one to two tablespoons of your grapeseed oil. Use your paper towel to liberally coat the pan. Pour out any extra if you got carried away. Continue to coat the inside of the pan. Now give a quick layer to the back of the pan as well. With the pan liberally coated, we keep heating up the pan till you see wisps of smoke from the oil like you would hear in the video. Large plumes of smoke means you have the pan way too hot. And as soon as you see those little wisps of smoke, take the pan off the heat and let it cool to room temp. We're going to repeat this two more times for a total of three. Now we need to remove any bad taste that sticks to the pan during this whole process. You only have to do this once, so don't worry about having to waste too much food. Cut up a half cup to three-fourths cup of literally any aromatics you have on hand. I just used some leftover white onion and some green onion. Heat up some oil over a medium flame. And now just stir fry those aromatics and try to get it all around the inside of the pan. This is going to leach any weird flavors into the aromatics, which we will be throwing away at the end. Here's some totally professional level tossing. Ooh, wow. That's it. You're ready to cook. Remember, when storing your wok for any length of time, coat the front and the back of the pan with a thin layer of your grapeseed oil to protect against rust.